Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Tim here. So today's video is going to be this cute little painting of some red flowers and a butterfly. This painting will be super easy to follow if you're a beginner or if you're a more experienced painter and just want something simple and fun to practice with, this will be a great exercise for you to paint along with. I absolutely love painting nature and flowers, and if you are new to digital painting, this will be a great place for you to start. So I will be using my favorite damp brush from the Procreate library. If you don't have the damp brush, it is available through the iPhone Pocket Procreate version, and I do recommend turning the grain scale of the brush down to about 15% to paint with. That way it's a little bit smoother, and we'll also be using the water pen and the soft airbrush. I've also included here my color palette, so you'll want to take a screenshot of the colors so that way you can add it to a new empty palette. I used a square size canvas for the shape of the Procreate file, and I also had almost had a little accident with this painting. I accidentally deleted the first part of the footage, so I ended up repainting it, which is why the cloud shape will be a little bit different, but it's the same process. Also, before we start, I've included here a rough sketch of the overall painting, and I'd like you to take a screenshot of it just so you can use it in your own painting. What you'll do is import the photo, and then you'll trace over top of it. That way you can get the placement similar to mine. So if you are ready, let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is lay down the background color with an all over blue, which is going to be the second blue shade in the first row. Next, in a new layer, we're going to use the darkest shade of blue on the top, which is the first blue in the first row, and you're going to lay a wash over the top of the painting with the soft airbrush. And then with the third blue in the first row, in the middle of the painting, lay a stripe of color down. And then with the fourth blue in the first row, you're going to lay a strip right next to the one you just created. And then using the Gaussian Blur tool, you're going to blur it to about 37%, and we have our background. Next, with the damp brush in a medium opacity and a small size, with the color white, we're going to begin sketching out three clouds. When you're happy with the cloud shape, we're going to take the blender tool with the damp brush stamp and then lightly blend it out. Just being careful to leave some of the lighter, whiter color up at the top so it still looks fluffy and light, and just lightly blending upwards on the bottom just to create a more puffy looking cloud. So when I painted this the first time, I didn't end up liking how it came out with the brush I used, so I switched brushes and I started re-recording it in a brand new video to finish the tutorial, but I liked the background from the first one, so I kept it. So there were two different videos, and I accidentally deleted the first one, which I didn't like, but it had part of the footage that I needed. So that was a bit of an oops, but I'm just so glad I didn't delete the video with the majority of the painting in it. So here is where I am switching over to the very first painting. So you'll see the clouds change just a little bit. Next, using the dark green, that is the very last green in the fourth row, and the fifth green in the fourth row, we're going to start painting the background foliage for the flowers. And on that same layer, once you get those two greens on there, you're going to use the first green in the fifth row and place it over top just using up and down paint strokes. And then you're going to take the blender tool, first with a medium size, and then second with a smaller size, just moving back and forth up and down, just to add some more dimension to that layer. Next, you're gonna make a copy of the grass layer to make it darker. In a new layer, using the first green in the fifth row and using the water pen with a small size and high opacity, we're gonna create some detail leaves. And the water pen can be a little touch sensitive, so it will definitely help to start at the bottom, pressing a little harder to get a wider base and then tapering into a thinner point at the tip. I did find it helped a little bit too to turn up the streamline just a little bit, especially if your hands are shaky like mine. And then when you're happy with the amount of leaves you have, using the damp brush with a small size and low opacity, you're going to blend it out lightly with the damp brush. So next we're going to use the trace layer of the painting that we created earlier from the screenshot, and you're going to put that layer on the very top and set it to about 20% opacity. That way you can lightly see where everything needs to go coming up here. 
Next, we're going to create a layer underneath the two grass layers and using the water pen and using the dark green that is the last color in the fourth row, we're going to create little buds for the flowers. And feel free to put as many or as little as you would like. We're going to give each of those little buds a new stem similar to the way that we created the grass stems from earlier. Next, with the water pen again, we're going to use the dark red that is the first color in the third row, and you're gonna start painting the flowers. And having that outline layer here really helps to put the flowers where they need to go and to help give you a better idea on the shape. The water pen also isn't one that I used a whole lot of before, but the more I've been using it, the more I'm really starting to love it. I love the shape taper on it. It just, it's a really great brush with a lot of different uses for it. Next, using the damp brush in a new layer, using the second red color in the third row with a small brush and medium opacity, we're going to start creating individual petals over top of the new flowers we just created. And this is going to create the base of the flower. And once the petals are painted, we're going to take the dark brown that is the fourth color in the fifth row, and you're going to create centers for each of the flowers. In a new layer, using the brownish red that is the third color in the fourth row, you're going to create a highlight over the center of the flower. You're then going to use the golden brown color that is the fourth color in the fourth row and create a little highlight over the highlight color. Which brings us to our painting break. So if you need to pause or to catch up or if you need to take a break and regroup, I will be here waiting to start part two when you're ready. I wanted to take a moment too to ask if you're enjoying this video so far. I invite you to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps my channel out. I'm having so much fun creating this kind of content and I hope you're enjoying it too. And I can't wait to see where this year takes this journey. So to start off again in a new layer using the third red that is the brightest red in the third row, we're going to highlight some more of our petals. You don't need to highlight every single petal, we just want to put a little bit of brighter color on some of them just to create some more highlights and a little bit more depth on the flowers, and then you can merge all of the flower layers together. And then you're going to create a layer right underneath of the flower layer, and then using the water brush in the first green in the fifth row, we're going to add a stem for each of the flowers. Once you have your stems, Using the first and the second green in the fifth row, you're going to create a couple of additional leaves in front of the other flowers. Next, we're going to create our butterfly. So turning on the outline layer again, using the dark gold yellow that is the fifth color in the second row, you're going to outline and fill in with the water pen over top of the butterfly outline. Once this is filled in, in a new layer, you're going to outline with the water pen again using the bright yellow color next to it in the palette. We're going to create some details over the butterfly wing. I also decided here I wanted my butterfly not quite as bright, so I turned the brightness down just a little bit. And then I took the damp brush with a light opacity and a small size and blended out the edges just a little bit. And you'll only want to blend out the brighter yellow layer. That way the bottom layer stays crisp and you don't lose the edges. Next, going back to the very top, you're going to make a copy canvas layer and put it on the very top layer. And then using the damp brush again with a small size and medium opacity, you're going to smooth over the flowers and then just kind of blend away everything that looks rough or anything that may need a little bit more blending. And just be super careful with the blender brush over the grass area. Sometimes it'll blend away all of your details. Um, this is a huge reason why I use a lot of copy canvas layers too. Just in case you mess anything up or if you don't like it, you can always do it again super easily. And now we've got the base of our painting created. So I'm going to start adding some details and I want to add just a little bit more clouds in the sky. So in a new layer, I'm going to add some white and the damp brush again. And we're going to add a little bit more lightness to the clouds and then lightly blend it out. I'm also going to add just a little bit more red color to the flowers just to kind of make them a little more solid and to clean up the edges just a little bit more. I also kind of wanted to add a little bit more detail and make them a little more round. I also decided here too that the clouds weren't white enough. So that new layer of clouds I just created, I'm just going to make a copy of it and then drop the opacity down to about 50%. That way it just kind of brightens up the image just a little bit more. 
Next, I'm gonna create another copy canvas layer just to preserve the detail. And then using the bright white yellow color, that's the fifth color in the third row, with a very small brush and a medium opacity, we're gonna create some details over top of the painting just to give the entire painting some more texture. We're gonna add a little bit more to the butterfly, just carving out the shape of his wing just a little bit more. We're gonna add it to the flowers and to the grass and to the sky and clouds, and then lightly blend it out, just making sure to blend over any hard edge as you see. And just a quick note, if the brightness level is still too light after you've blended it out, you can always adjust the opacity of the layer and turn it down just a little bit more if it's still too bright. Sometimes the overlay function can be a little too intense. Next, I'm going to make another copy canvas layer, and then I'm basically just going to repeat what I just did, the process, and then add a little bit more red color over the flowers to brighten them up a little bit more and to add some more details. And then I'm going to add a little bit more color to the butterfly and clean up some more of the edges just to sharpen it up a little bit more. After we get done adding more details, in another new layer, we're going to basically repeat the same process of using overlay with that bright yellow shade of white. And we're going to take a small brush with medium opacity and lightly shade over all of the painting. And this is going to help further brighten and add texture. And with us using the overlay function, with this color having a slight yellow cast to it, it's going to help add some mid-tones to the painting and it will help to add some more colors that we didn't originally use. So this helps to add a lot of subtlety to the painting without a whole lot of work, which I absolutely love. It's definitely super easy to create a lot of highlights that work well with the whole image and a bunch of different light rays with this method without having to keep a large palette of colors to work from, which can definitely be a little overwhelming. At this stage of the painting, I generally quit using the palette anyways and just start using the eyedropper tool just to pick up shades. That way I don't have to stop and go back and forth. And then we're going to blend it out and I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 85%. Next, there was this little patch of color that the overlay created on top of the grass that I really liked. So it's a slightly brighter green, so I color grabbed it and using the water pen, I ended up adding some more leaves over the top of the grass. And then using the bright yellow color that we used for the butterfly originally and the water pen again, we're going to add highlights to the center of each flower. And then we're going to add little yellow dots around each center just to give it a little bit more detail. And I'm going to add just a little bit more clouds to the sky. So in a new layer with the white color again, I'm going to add just a little bit more white to the clouds with the damp brush and blend those areas out. And the last thing left for us to do is to sign our painting and we're done. Thank you so much for watching this friend. I hope you had fun with this painting and enjoyed the process. If you like this kind of content and want to see more videos like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video, friend. Happy painting!